Welcome to Fictional Narrative. I'm Neri, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my selections for Asian Readathon, Emergency Contact, as fulfilling a recommendation by an Asian person. I will say I enjoyed this book, but I really enjoyed only two thirds of the book, and I looked it up afterwards. It is a debut novel, and I had to ask myself the things that I have an issue with are those the regular pitfalls of a debut novel? Or just really upsetting to me. Yeah, I don't think I can excuse it as like something that is an issue with a debut novel. So the story follows a girl named Penny who is just entering college and Sam who is also in college but she's about 17 or 18, he's about 21. So they develop this line of communication where essentially they become each other's emergency contact. Super cute concept. And maybe I shouldn't be too picky. I know it is a YA novel. I'm not I'm not looking for anything complex. I just really wonder why it took so long to enjoy this novel. It's the setup. When Sam and Penny meet, there is kind of this obvious buildup of oh he's a film student. Oh he corrected her that this person that she mentioned was not a film student. And it's like, okay, maybe this is a moment of, oh, he's a little pretentious. But actually, for the most part, when it comes to his dealings with anybody else, he's very grounded, very down to earth, except for his dealings with his own ex-girlfriend, because that's emotional on a different level for him. But that's the setup with Sam. You know, we have someone troubled, but still down to earth. And then we have Penny, who's coming out of high school, who lost her best friend. Not not like, oh, her best friend died, but like her best friend moved. And, you know, she's been alone in high school, except for this boyfriend that she does not like. And she judges him. She judges her mom. She goes to college and uh, she judges her roommate's best friend, which I think is fair because she's also kind of really mean and casually racist <laughs> but she's so judgmental and so in that mindset that I am an outcast because I have this baggage and is that okay? Yes, that's okay. But there is, there are these moments where she compares herself with other girls, whether it was in high school or whether it's her roommate and her roommate's friend. They're all different people. And yes, you can compare yourself to people sometimes, but she does it in such a way that is so pointed, like that it just becomes me versus other girls. And I don't like that. You know, you can have a troubled character. You can have a character that is kind of an outcast. You can have a character that's awkward, who has a hard time communicating, who doesn't understand, you know, okay, this is what I need to do to maintain a friendship, or this is how I make friends, even. But this setup is very different. It's, it's, it's very, very different from what I described. It's just not necessary to have any kind of setup where it's literally like, oh, I'm not like the other girls. Because, because at no point, and I'm going to hammer this in, like, especially, because if, if the author had done something with this, maybe I could excuse it. Like, maybe there's a reason why I could excuse this. It ties in not at all to any of the plot. It is not used as a device for anything. And at one point when she finally realizes that she can relate to the to the women in her life that are not in her life now and that she can be friends with them, we only get a moment. So like I, I can read like halfway through this book. We have one moment that is somehow supposed to remedy the absolute atrociousness of how this was set up. No. It's hard because I I feel like Penny is really a character that I can relate to, but she is so unlikable in a sense that I cannot relate to. There are unlikable characters, but you do something with those unlikable characters. You have them earn this moment. You have them earn this new mindset that they have, and she didn't earn it. She didn't 
go through it. She had one moment and then it was, it was very short. And of course we have to amp up the drama, you know, oh, but there's some miscommunication with her new friends. But that doesn't take away all of the judgmental things that she said before. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so I went back through the audiobook specifically to find this description as kind of a glaring example of the kind of judgmentalness that I'm talking about. Penny describes the author that she really admires and also a professor that she's taking writing lessons from. She says, J.A. made nerdiness glamorous, and not in some posery Tumblr way where girls played first-person shooters in their underpants to be attractive to guys. That's the kind of judgmental thinking that I don't think just because she feels she can make friends with the women in her life or relate to them on some level, that that type of judgment is going to go away. If anything, it just makes them an exception to that kind of judgment. But when she looks at other people, she may still think the same way. And that's why I don't think it's really a lesson that she's learned. Essentially give the reader all of these things to build up this character. This is this person. And you cannot make that go away with just one moment. That's just character building. With Sam, I didn't feel like there was anything wrong. <laughs> I'm obviously lying. This issue is not really within his character, like him as a person, but in his situations, and those pretty much resolve themselves quite nicely, uh, <laughs> as nicely as when you start reading this book and you're like, oh my god, no. <laughs> this book does have its funny moments, I just, I've never, maybe I'm reading the wrong books, I have never heard any mention in any other book where armpits and feet are so desired. <laughs> I never thought I would actually have to say that. Okay, so this happens twice. Um, Penny is attracted to Sam, okay? He's apparently a very hot dude. He's a catch. She is so attracted to him that she finds his armpits hot. And the first time she mentions it when she meets him, okay, silly, funny. The next time she mentions it, or did she mention it twice during that first meeting? But anyway, the following time that she mentions it is, is totally, like, kind of out of the blue. Uh, Sam has a panic attack. While he is telling her why he had a panic attack, which he doesn't even at this point accept as a panic attack is when she decides to mentally admire, once again, his very hot armpit. Don't worry, Penny is not the one who talks about feet, okay? Sam is the one who talks about feet. In fact, he's not talking about Penny's feet, by the way. He's talking about his ex's feet. There's a quote where Sam is dealing with his ex and he's thinking about her body and how he knows all of the real estate and then he thought about her feet then later on in the book he is telling off his ex he has had enough all of her friends say that she has model like hands and he's telling her off that she doesn't know enough about him like he knows about her and then he goes on to say her friends think her hands are the you know, great, but the, her, the real treat is her feet. So I went to find this quote from Sam as well, and it is so much worse than I remembered it. He says to his ex while he's telling her off, not only do I know everything about you, but I remember everything about you. My folder on you is so fat and bursting with nonsensical shit because I couldn't help myself. Your hands Bullshit. Your feet, your knobby, misshapen feet are the real treat. That's a fact. Woo! But why? <laughs> Throughout this book, I've had no sympathy for his ex, but to put myself in her shoes, I am an absolute jerk to this guy. I just got told that my feet are better than my hands, although my hands are model-like. 
if I'm this person, I deserve to be told off. I don't think I need to know that my feet are better than my hands. I'm not saying anything. I think that hasn't been said before. Again, I am a very lenient um, raider. So the fact that this doesn't even breach four stars for me tells me that that really just annoyed me that much. There's no payoff for it. There, there just isn't. So... So those are my words, considering this is like the first review that I've put on a YouTube channel, like, I don't know that anybody is gonna benefit from this, but if you do, if you pick up this book, if you disagree with me, let me know. Alright, well thank you for watching, bye!